Hi and welcome to video 2 of International SAP PIPO Operation Weeks where we'll talk about transports. So when I talk about transports it's a lot more than just CTS Plus uh, or Charm that you'd be using to handle these transports. So in a PI world you require a lot more information as a part of the transport you, you have a development part and you have a configuration part and in the configuration there's a lot of content that you need to consider how do you define channels what's path how do you uh, do you have any need to document changes you need to prove with tests that everything goes on correctly you need somehow to approve these changes and a lot of times I've seen it's just being approving that the documents look all right you've filled in the right documents but not if it actually has is is what's happening in the system and then you need to repeat this process also to uh, production with Vicaf you have one in integrated system that handles the full processing chain so you do not need to go into multiple excel documents send them around it makes it a lot easier for you to manage also when you go into migrations to cloud integrations so just an example of what you'd be spending on uh, on transports. Um, so there's a lot of time for testing. There is transportation of content. There's documentation. You need to approve these transports between different teams. Um, you need to import the transport. Then you need to configure the channels. And this can easily take four to eight hours per transport. If you have 20 transports per month, then <laughs> this is a lot of money, <laughs> uh, depending on how much you, you use. If you can save 50% of that with automation, it is definitely something that is notable in your organization. So let me show you the FIGAF tool and how it looks like. So here we have the tool. We can go into our PI system. Our PI system here it's the the part that's connected to our PI system we can select the artifacts that we want to transport and we select an, an ICO we assign it to a ticket we can see who made a change to it so we assign it to a ticket we select which landscape it needs to be a part of and in most cases you just have one landscape here you select the the Jira number and the description for this. You select OK. Then we go here. We can then attach all the <coughs> all the dependent object that is used as a part of this. So that means we got both directory and repository content. So just before I made a change in our message mapping. Uh, just to give you some idea of what is actually possible. Message mapping here, we have it. We have uh, a way here we can look at versions. And if we look at versions, we can compare it with diff HTML or we can compare it in a Excel sheet. And obviously for message mapping the Excel sheet works better. It gives you an easy idea of where something was changed. Um, and you can also generate this without the diff part. Um, so next up is I go to my test cases. And here we can look up test cases that we have created for this. We have one test case here we'll then select. We, you should obviously run it on all the scenarios that you have. We select which system to run it on. We'll run it on our DOE system. And then we can fetch this test, the, the result of this testing. So we can see we get some errors here. We can look at the diffs here. It is because this price was changed because we uh, changed the the, one of the factors in our calculations so this is okay what we can then do is we can go in we can say okay uh, mark as test case so that means that now next time we run it we will get this uh, result and this is what we would expect so that means you always have current test cases then we can go to our transport create a 
speed up transport and here we have our transport that's both a file uh, ESR transport we can do comparison of some of these uh, data types for the message mapping etc if there's any differences uh, in it uh, we send it to approval we can approve it and then we can take the directory here we have a lot more components uh, into it if we look at communication channel we can define uh, numbers in our description we can easily go and filter uh, non-transportable so you don't need to remember it will find them all if there's a password you would need to enter it um, you can set up uh, globally search replace for for a number to re replace it with some other number this makes it a lot easier and mean that you do not need to remember all of the SAP host names etc you're using in your landscape we will also send it to approval and approve it and now we can just do the import uh, where it will take this artifacts we have deploy it and configure it uh, and activate our change list so that means that it is really a simple process we have as a part of this we can see everything was uh, skipped because they already exist uh, and the changes we have made was not uh, easily to see so this really makes it easier to manage the transport you can then go back to the ticket and update it to import it um, and then create the next ticket in the landscape to ensure that you transport it to production also all of this get traced locked so it's really easy to see who does what and I think that is the reason we should be able to save 50% of the time that you're spending on all of this governance there's a lot more advanced features that we can also cover. Um, how do you manage uh, if you only want to tr transport part of the ICO? Uh, if you have a receiver split that is not ready to be moved, uh, changing ICOs to use other business component systems and reconfiguring the landscape. There will be some more videos on this topic, uh, so be sure to, to follow along and uh, on Thursday we have a webinar to so sign up for this at figaf.com slash PI week. So thanks for watching. I hope this has been interesting. Thanks.